I'm audible till the end. Yeah, thank you. So, as my friend mentioned, I'm going to present on accelerated erasure coding, the new frontiers of software defined storage. So, let's just begin with uh, some of the existing technologies that we have today for data protection. It's not projecting. So I think everybody is familiar with RAID. RAID is nothing but a redundant array of inexpensive disks or independent disks. So what they do is they take collect, uh, collect physical disks together and show it as a logical disk to the operating system or the application. Now in recent years we have seen a lot of data coming into data centers and RAID has not scaled to the level that we needed. That is mainly because of the failures that has happened in RAID and if I am to quantify a rate failure of two TB disk can take up to eight hours to rebuild. So these kind of problems happened and people started looking for alternatives. One of the alternative was age-old mirroring itself. So now industry accepts three-way mirroring as a standard for data protection techniques. But imagine a petabyte scale of data center. We are talking about three times, that is three petabytes of data to be used for three-way mirroring. This added to a lot of cost. So when we came to such a situation where the cost was the problem, again people started looking for alternatives. And one of the alternatives was erasure coding. Erasure coding also works on the same principles of RAID. It collects a bunch of physical disks together and then present it as a logical disk to the user. Has anybody here heard of erasure coding before? Okay, a lot of people. But let me just go through simple basics so that we set the stage right of erasure coding. So erasure coding, uh, what it does is when it receives some data from the application, it divides the data into equal size chunks. Let's call it data chunks and encodes it using a mathematical operation to derive code chunks or parity chunks. So in this example, I'm showing a four comma two erasure code where four represents the number of data chunks and two represents the coding chunks. Now, <clears throat> the important property of erasure code is it has to recover from at least k failures that can happen. So for an n comma k erasure code, the k is the key factor for reconstruction. These kind of codes are called optimal codes or MDS codes, MDS being maximum distance separable. So erasure codes, as we all know now, it's fairly popular. They have been used in Linux file system, Linux uh, software RAID, Google file system, HDFS, and even in Facebook data centers. So before we go ahead, let's look into the I.O. that happens through an erasure code algorithm. So during a write, as we described, as I described, the data is divided into equal size chunks. So that will be F1, F2, F3, F4. And an encode algorithm runs on top of it to derive two more chunks, that is C1 and C2. Once we get these chunks, we write this into the disks S1 to S6, and the operation is complete. Now, as we said before, <coughs> this uh, whenever the read happens, it simply reads from the data disks from here, because in most of the erasure code algorithms like Read Solomon the data is simply kept as same as what has it has received from the application. So D1, D2, D3, D4 is similar to F1, F2, F3, F4. So during the completion of the read, it just concatenates the data and gives it back to the application. But the problem occurs when there is a uh, disk failure happens. Let's see what happens then. So in this example, let's say S4 and S6 have failed. So now we cannot recover D4 and C2. So what it does is it reads from the available disks, that is S1, S2, S3, and S5, and collects the chunks. Note that there is one code chunk in between. It applies a reverse mathematical logic that it applied for encoding and reconstructs the data back. So that is F2, F3, F4, and <coughs> along with D4 and C2, which is written into new disks, and the operation is completed. Right? 
Now, it's not a coincidence that we have read from all four disks. To do a recovery in a traditional erasure codes like Reid Solomon, we have to read from at least n disks. Now, that being said, it is a shortcoming of this kind of code. Moving forward, uh, <coughs> so I just described that there is a mathemat mathematical operation that is applied to do the encode. So in a read solomon kind of a case, what we do is we generate a uh, matrix and multiply it with data, which is quite CPU intensive. So erasure codes like read solomon are heavy on CPU cycles. Another problem that we see with erasure code is the problem of reconstruction. Now, why do we go for reconstruction itself is shown by the graph here. This is one of the graph that, pub was, that was published by Facebook and it shows the number of nodes that has failed during month and each of the numbers show the failure on a day. So if you see on a bad day, we had more than 100 failures. So on large data, system, data centers, it is very essential to have a good policy or good and effective reconstruction process. But if you look back, the Reed Solomon kind of a traditional code requires a lot of data as well as a lot of network bandwidth to do the reconstruction. That is because it has to at least get uh, data from n nodes that we just uh, said before. And the amount of data that is recovered from each of the nodes is equivalent to the amount of data that we need to recover. For example, if we need to do one MB of restore, we need to take at least n times of the data to do the reconstruction. Now, reconstruction hap can happen in two different scenarios. One is called degraded read. In this scenario, what happens is the <coughs> application is trying to read a block in the logical disk, and that read does not complete it in time. This can be due to several reasons. Maybe software reasons, because a lot of applications are already trying to access that location, or due to hardware reasons because that sector is bad in the disk. Now, in both scenarios, we have to do the reconstruction of that specific location to get back the data. The other case is the obvious one, where the disk itself has gone bad, and we need to reconstruct the whole disk chunk by chunk. So I've described a lot of problems here with the racial code, as well as the existing technology, and in last decade, there was, a, there was some research that has gone into improving the deconstruction process of the erasure code, as well as <clears throat> there were several new codes were developed. So one of them is locally recoverable code, LRC. Sorry, let me just move it away. So it can be better understood by the diagram here. So what we do is, let's say this is an original uh, read Solomon code with eight data chunks and four parity chunks. For time being, let's call them as global parity chunks. And in the process of encoding, we divide this data into two sets. That is D1 to D4 and D5 to D8 and encode them separately using a local parity. So it can help us in, in the case of reconstruction because any failure in one of these sets with one block we can recover it from the local parity. This is advantageous because we just need to read now four nodes. And uh, like in other case, we have to read at least eight nodes. So that way, <coughs> any one failure in one of these sets can be recovered using local parity. But if there are more than two errors, uh, two or more errors, then we have to go for the global parity. So at a cost of little extra storage, we have achieved much faster algorithm. But this is not just one. The other is uh, regenerating codes. So regenerating codes, they use two principles. Uh, one is that they consider the chunks in terms of sub-chunks. Sub they divide the chunks again into sub-chunks. And <clears throat> when the recovery or reconstruction happens, they just read specific sub-chunks, not the whole chunks. So this way, they require less amount of data that needs to be recovered. The second principle that they use is they try to contact more than n nodes in an erasure code system, unlike the traditional erasure code where they go for just n nodes. 
they go for more than n uh, nodes and try to get the data from each of these. So based on that, uh, the erasure codes, modern, re uh, sorry, regenerating codes are represented as a phi tuple, where n and k has the same meaning as a traditional erasure code, while d is the number of nodes that the uh, regenerating code contacts, <coughs> and alpha is the chunk size, beta is the sub-chunk size. Now these are again classified into minimum uh, storage regenerating codes and minimum bandwidth regenerating code based on the aspect that they improve. So with this introduction, I would like to explain the work that we have done at Ericent. Now at Ericent, we understood that these are the two major problems, that is the erasure code being compute intensive and the erasure code, the re reconstruction of the erasure code is quite costly. We thought we will improve on these two aspects. So to improve on the deconstruction part, we selected a uh, minimum storage regenerating code which was developed by IASC, Professor Vijay and Mayana Waja and others. And <clears throat> the selection was based on some of these criteria. Like this code requires least possible storage overhead and least possible repair bandwidth. And they have shown already as part of uh, file and storage technologies conference 2018 that it can give 3x times repair time reduction and 30 percentage and 106 percentage improvement in case of degraded read and write scenarios. So this was the prime criteria that we selected. And what we did for the second problem of erasure code being compute intensive, we moved the whole erasure code into GPU thereby offloading the CPU to do any other work. As part of moving the clay code to GPU, we had to accelerate one of the traditional erasure code called Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm, which is a variant of Reed Solomon algorithm. And <clears throat> as part of this presentation, I'll be giving out some results on that as well. As a third measure, just accelerating the codes will not help us. So we thought we will integrate them with a popular storage solution that is SIF. So going forward, so I'll be describing some of the optimizations that we did in the GPU space. So before that, uh, we selected, as I said, we selected Cauchy Reed Solomon as part of the clay code <coughs> optimizations. And Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm, to give you a brief, it creates its own generator matrix for multiplying with the data. Uh, called Cauchy generator matrices, and they reduce the multiplication operations using subcopy operations and XOR operations. So what we did was we used uh, constant memory for the generator matrix in GPU. Now GPU has several kinds of memories: global memory, local memory, constant memory, register memory, and these differ on based on the latency it is required to read or write to them. Now using global memory for bit matrix or the generator matrix was not efficient. So we moved it to a constant memory. The second point that we did was we used shared memory, which is a bit faster than the global memory, <coughs> to access the data itself. Moving on. So before, before I uh, go into the optimizations that we did for the clay code, I would like to explain a little bit about the clay code, encode, and decode process. Now, it's a bit easy to go through this example here. Here, I'm trying to show a two by two code, and these are the data chunks. So if you remember from the earlier presentation, uh, earlier slide, we had D1, D2, D3, D4 being encoded to C1 and C2. So imagine this has one complete D1, and this has D2. Now, as we said before, the minimum storage regenerating codes divides a chunk into subchunks. So there are four subchunks here, one, two, three, four. And what we, have, what we have shown here is we have shown each of the subchunk as a point in a 3D space, that is XYZ place. So to start with, uh, the clay code differentiate each point on the 3D space uh, into coupled and uncoupled points. So coupled points are the blue points here, uncoupled points are the red points here. 
during the encode process, the red dots or uncoupled points are copied as is into a virtual data cube that I show here. This is also called uncoupled data cube. Now, what we are trying to do here is, we are trying to build two data chunks for this virtual data cube here. The red dots are copied as is, and the blue dots, let's say C1 and C2, which are coupled to each other, are transformed using something called pairwise reverse transform to get two new points in this data chunk. Similarly, the other points are also constructed, and once the process completes, we have two data chunks in this virtual data cube. Now, it's a two by two algorithm, so we have just have to recover two data chunks. And once it is done, we need to recover the code chunks on this data cube. This is done using an MDS, maximum distance separable code, again. And once that completes, we have a complete virtual data cube or uncoupled data cube here. You can observe that still we have not derived the code chunks on the data cube. So this is done by a reverse transform that we did here on these two code chunks available to derive these two code chunks. So again, we do a pairwise forward transform on the coupled points to derive the code chunks. Is there any doubts here? It's, it's a complex procedure. Uh, so I'm just talking about uh, the subchunks here. Uh, so we have each subchunk creating one subchunk on this side. So we are talking about a, uh, like a smaller set of the data chunk and transformed being to get a new uh, subchunks on the other side. This is probably one time uh, operation when the Ceph volume is created, not during the recovery. It won't happen. No, this is the encode procedure that you're talking about yeah. here. So you have got a request from Ceph to encode the data. Now this is what clay code does to the encode process, right? So it's a two by two encode. So we get two data chunks, we derive two code chunks. So moving forward, uh, we can see that there are three operations involved, pairwise reverse transform, MDS, and pairwise forward transform. So decode is something similar. Let's assume that we have the same queue. We are doing a decode for two by two case, and this is the data chunk that is missing. So we again do a PRT and MDS algorithm to derive the virtual data cube or uncoupled data cube. With this in place, we identified that these two points are red dots and it can be directly copied. So these subchunks are directly copied to the data chunks here. And to derive the other two subchunks here, what we do is we apply a logic in clay code which says that the if there are subchunks available like C1 and U1, we can derive C1 star. So this is a fundamental property with clay code. And with this property, we derive C1 star and C2 star here. If you observe, during the decode time, we only accessed half of the queue, which means we accessed less amount of data than it should have been in the case of a traditional erasure code, which makes it efficient in terms of the data required. So moving forward, the clay code is already available as an open source uh, algorithm in Ceph database. So what we did was we took the uh, Ceph's code for clay and we tried to optimize based on that. Now there were several steps. The clay code there, uh, for generality, it used a normal traditional code in place of PFT, PRT, and MDS codes. But we thought if we keep the interface as general, it may not yield the performance. So what we did was we removed uh, and made it much more faster by directly accessing these codes. So as I described earlier, we optimized Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm solely for this purpose. So all of the PFT, PRT, and MDS algorithms were turned into Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm. <clears throat> now, 
with eliminating the erasure code interfaces, we could actually eliminate few data copies and some of the allocations that were associated with it. But that was not enough. When we went ahead, we saw that ClayCore itself involved a lot of copies and a lot of transformations. Now the copies happened to be in the CPU space, which was inefficient. So what we did is we moved the whole clay code down to the GPU so that <clears throat> all the operations, even the copy and the transformation happen at the GPU space. This gave us some performance boost. Not only that, we saw that there are several two by two cases of uh, Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm being employed by the clay code. So we thought, why not just optimize the Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm uh, for two by two case? So we had a specific CUDA based kernel implemented for a two by two case. So once we did all that, we did the testing as part of Ceph itself. So now our code is as part of uh, Ceph's erasure code interface, along with uh, Cauchy Reed Solomon is part of J erasure library that happens to be as part of Ceph already. We tested this on NVIDIA GTX 1080 on Ceph 13.1 version, which is not, nothing but Mimic, with CUDA driver 8.0. So let's look at some results. So here, what I'm trying to show is uh, the J erasure Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm was tested with reference code, uh, meaning the code that existed at pa as part of J erasure library in Ceph. And GPU code is what uh, we implemented. And we tested it for various n comma k value. I have uh, represented it as k comma m, uh, this is a typo. So various n comma k values were uh, 6, 4, 12, 6, 18, 9, and 20, 10. So we tried these n comma k values with different data sizes uh, that we received from application. So different data sizes that we used were 2 MB, 4 MB, and 8 MB. So what we see is the uh, performance given by erasure code algorithm is around the best case is 60 megabytes per second but in case of accelerated version we get at least 1199 megabytes per second so there is a huge shift and we saw that the performances are bettering uh, with the higher chunk size so moving forward with the decode case so here also we per, uh, check the performances with two different k, n comma k values that is 6.4 and 12.6. But this time what we did was we thought we took uh, two different cases of erasures. Well, let's say uh, two erasures, but it means is two of the data disks have gone bad, and three erasures, and that means three of the data disks have gone bad. What we observed was the performance was dropping in case where the erasures have increased. Now the drop was significant, that is around 35 percentage in case of J erasure reference code, while in case of a GPU code, the drop was less than 10 percentage, these cases. So this is the comparison between the reference code and the GPU code itself. So the orange bars that you see are for the GPU code and not so visible bars, blue bars, are for the reference code. So there is a huge shift of the performance that we see. What we see is around 16 times better performance of the GPU code with 6 comma 4 n, n, n comma k values, while it reduces to around 7 times for 20 comma 10 values. On the decode side, however, the gain is not so much, around 5 to 7 percentage, uh, sorry, 5 to 7 times of the values for 6, 4 and 12, 6. So moving forward, so here is the results, same as uh, for clay code. We are showing the same n, k values on this axis for 2 MB, 4 MB and 8 MB data chunk sizes. <coughs> Now we have a similar observation. The numbers are around 30 megabytes per second, 
best cases, while we have around a 10, per, 10 times increment in case of GPU. Now again, the GPU performs better when the chunk size increases. On the GPU decode part, we don't see a similar behavior that we saw in case of j erasure cauchy reed solomon algorithm. What we see here is that erasures increases, but the performance is consistent. That is due to the implementation of the clay code. Now, the same behavior is seen in case of GPU also. The performances remain almost consistent. But however, there is a drop when we see uh, there is a uh, when we see n comma k value to be 64 to n comma k value to be 126 again coming back to the performance comparison of reference code and gpu code we see that the performance gains when the n comma k value improves so in case here if you see uh, there was a 11x performance boost for 6,4 case while it increases up to 40x in case of 20,10 values. However, the GPU decode gives a consistent gain of around uh, 13x for 6,4 values for two or three ratios while the performance decreases to 7x for a 12,6 case. As a summary, uh, I want to say that we did this work. Now, at this point, we are working with a test engine, not SIF actually. And the performance boost is quite good. To re uh, reiterate the numbers, we have up to 16x performance improvements in case of ENCODE and 10x performance improvement in case of DECODE for Cauchy Reed Solomon algorithm in J ratio library that being the best values that I can portray. And in the case of clay code, we reached up to 41 times improvement in case of ENCODE and approximately 13 times improvement in the case of DECODE for different K, M values. Going forward, we are not complete yet. We are still trying to improve on clay code and we wish to do the testing with Ceph and integrate our erasure code plugin library with Ceph. Before I conclude, I just wish to mention that erasure code is going to be a big thing tomorrow. There are several reasons for that. One of them being in data centers, there are various types of applications. Those applications can be having different workloads. And tomorrow we may have to come up with erasure code algorithms that work with different kind of workloads. So there will be development in those areas. Not only that, we are seeing a lot of storage arrays, flash arrays coming into picture. And we believe that from Arison that there will be new erasure code algorithms which will cater to these kind of new devices. And who knows, to avoid the file system related overheads, the ECs will be integrated as part of file system. Last but not least, once you have a lot of erasure code algorithms in market, there will be a need of converting from one to another like transcoding. So we believe that there will be, again, researchers into these areas where new and efficient algorithms will be found, which will transform from one erasure code algorithm to another. With this note, I conclude my talk, this reference, and thank you for your time. Any questions? Hello. Uh, Hi. Yeah, so this clay code to yes. make it work on GPU, did you have to do something specific or was it like readily available? No, it was a complete uh, new develop from, development from our side. How much time does it take to do that? It took around two to three months of time. To, uh, three man to make it run on GPU. It to was already it, running on CPU. It was already running on GPU. Okay. So we did uh, make it run on GPU, took the measurement values. We had some test code to be written on top of that. So everything together took two to three man months of time. Man months, okay. All right. Thank
Um, <clears throat> if we were to understand your discussion so far, just to summarize so that I catch up, uh, there were two uh, parallel areas that you worked on. One is on J erasure and trying to replace some of the algorithm with accelerated uh, uh, Reed Solomon. And there was another uh, approach to use a uh, replace totally J erasure with uh, clay, uh, clay code, I believe. Yeah, I right. think that's there a good two, summary. Two two different, uh, you know, uh, algorithmic uh, algorithmic changes that you actually try to see whether you can improve, right? Yes. yes. But this by itself, uh, you, you you did uh, probably I didn't catch the summary there okay. as to why you had to include GPU. I believe GPU is by itself we understand there is too many okay. matrix computations involved and therefore performance might be an issue mm -hmm. and therefore it might help. I mean that's a separate discussion we all understand. But with just the algorithmic change, what what was uh, the, the summary of the result? Okay, uh, so let me just go back a little bit. As I started uh, the slide that, which described our work, so I said we identified two areas of improvements. Okay, uh, so I'm running out of time, I guess. So uh, we identified two areas of improvements. One is that the initial core algorithms were heavy on the CPU. So what it means is, it imposes a restriction on, let's say, uh, a server which runs the initial code algorithm. And <clears throat> to improve that part, we moved it to GPU. Now, that had two advantages. One is, it made it faster. Second is, the server was free to do application workload. I mean, that's an independent research because even with uh, regular RAID algorithms, you can move it to GPU and free up the CPU. Or you, yes. have, you can have accelerated cards independently freeing up CPU. Yes. But, but that by itself is a different discussion, I think, to, to, to your core uh, area. I think you should more focus on algorithmic improvements to erasure coding. Okay. And that is something which, because not every system architecture would carry a GPU, and that adds more value than actually adding additional hardware resources to actually free up CPU. Right. Sure. I'll take your suggestion. Thank you. Any more questions? Is there a plan to test with the ISAL also? Like clay code currently can be tested with ISAL. Okay. Is there a plan to test with uh, ISAL and compare it with GPU? Because even they have some accelerations. I just want okay. to see how the numbers uh, are. ISAL, right? Intense, uh, Intel Storage Library. Now, uh, at this point, uh, we have not included that in the plan. So immediate steps will be to uh, integrate this solution as part of Ceph and test it. So once that is done, and if it picks traction with people, I think uh, we can extend it to compare it with ISAL also. Thank you. So she is Maina Vaja, who has developed uh, clay code. This <laughs> time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.